Talk. Um, your host, Aban Yor, and also I have my co-host, Ponch, and we are here today to get to share with you um, our ongoing community support uh, services mm -hmm. in the area of um, uh, immigration issue and also about employment. This is our topic for today. And also last week we just talked about, last week or last month, we talk yes, about yes. Uh, housing and also social welfare systems, work and income, how our community finding uh, difficult to access the systems and we support them to make it easier for them. And I hope today our conversation, you will be able to get something out of it. And we are here today to just to share the insight of our experience dealing with immigration issue, the way how we help our community and also the way how we help our people to find employment opportunity. Now I will pass it on to my co-host, Ponch, it's your turn. Thank you, Avan. Uh, thank you for introducing me. And um, so um, we just would like to recap uh, from what we have discussed in our last talk show. So um, Faisal and Asif, um, what are the uh, main uh, you know, issues that we've brought up regarding to uh, working income and uh, housing uh, in our last talk show? Yeah, this is the, uh, thank you very much for the point. Uh, Faisal Farali, of course. And uh, <laughs> um, the main topic and the big topic we have that day, and, and it's, uh, it's really, we touched where the pain of the community. Yeah. Mm. Uh, housing. You know, it's a big, it's a big topic. Yes, it's a big topic because anyone need the shelter to yeah. start from the morning. I have a nice house. I need to start to go to search for work. That's what our community need. So housing is the main. It become issue. a big issue now. Yeah, uh, as if can reflect about MSD and that one. Uh, kia ora everyone, uh, this is Asif Ahmed and uh, we are here with the Reset TV talk and I'd like to thank uh, our co-host Aban and you know, uh, Pwint for uh, introducing us and inviting us to this show uh, again. Uh, last time we were discussing about uh, the community issue, I think th these two issues are one of the biggest issues that our community faces yeah, is uh, yeah. housing and work and income yes. and uh, we've shared some uh, uh, stories and examples with you that uh, uh, from, for, for past uh, uh, years how ARCC has been supporting uh, uh, the families because what happened is that they go to work and income and then sometimes what happened is that this, sometimes this communication issue, language issue yeah. and then yeah. what happened is that they end up with uh, nothing. And um, even though if they have a communication, there is no communication gap and sometimes they just need someone to advocate for them. Sometimes yes. what happens is that uh, um, if you go and uh, uh, they will not give you all the details, but when they know that someone is there for to help them, they will listen to you. Yes. yes. So over to you, Abba. <laughs> yeah, I think last month the highlight for me was the mindset of victim mentality our community yes. has yeah, yeah. because uh, I think we share one of the example which mm -hmm. is someone come to our office and he was saying oh um, my house has been increased and this money I will not be able to to pay mm -hmm. and then from our point of view as a organization always we look at the two sides of the story it's not just the one side is sort of our community member come, oh, this is working income done, this to me, or oh, how yeah. <laughs> And then we bring them, they just come down because lack of information has become a, a crucial part mm. of yes. the uh, misunderstanding yes. the system. Yeah. So big, yeah. we help them to understand, first of all, they have obligation toward accessing public services and yes. especially government services as yeah. well. So we reach to the point that when we investigate or support them, because our support always is a two-way. We make frontline managers in work and income to understand the circumstances of the person. Yes. At the same time, we also let our community member their accountability and responsibility toward accessing the services. Yes. So when we find out that a letter has been sent three times, three months, and no response, no response. Yeah. then the system <laughs> itself will be able to generate 
um, the response regarding to that person. Yes. And in the end of the day, they fall, but it's easy for them just to point the fingers to the system. So yeah. that is one of the highlights, but and definitely the other thing as well regarding to uh, the housings. Uh, mm. Some of our community they don't have uh, enough or quality information to have better understanding their obligation toward housing mm. for those who want to transfer or those who need a state house or those who need uh, a, a really um, a, a, a new house. So the waiting list in the systems it's really some of our community don't understand the yeah. queue, how it works, yeah. and the way how we communicate with the system as well. Is it something we might be able in future to to improve as well? Yeah. Because they need to have enough information in order for them to understand. It's not just the system don't want to respond to, them, want to them, but they yeah. don't understand uh, how the system works. Yes. Because sometimes also we refer them, put yourself in the shoes of the system. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you gonna feel? Look, yes. like. it's the same thing. How the system yeah. also can be in your shoes. So yeah. empathy it become the most important element here. Yeah. So yeah. that is the last month's our discussion mm. is about uh, the housing and social welfare system. How can be accessed? Mm -hmm. So um, now going to our topic, um, uh, the immigration issue and employment. employment. Um, just stay tuned and we will be coming back shortly. Thank you for listening. Thank you. today's main topic um, yeah. starting with immigration so um, Faisal what are the uh, main challenges the community faces when accessing um, the um, immigration service uh, like this it's very simple the immigration is um, like a mystery like uh, something strange to the community they don't understand <laughs> what they do <laughs> this is the truth this is the truth Nobody understands what's happening inside there, what they do, how they're processing, how their mentality going there. Uh, MSD housing, we know how to deal with them. Yeah. In other organizations, yeah, RCC, yeah. we know how to deal with them yes. because we are experienced and we are very close. But the good things with them, they are the housing and MSD, they are very close to us. But housing, but immigration is a ministry and we don't know anything. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say to us go online and apply. Excuse me. Apply for for any visit. It's like, for example, let's say a visitor visa. Mm -hmm. You go, you <coughs> found around thirty something pages, different questions, and it seems when you read it like the the tricking questions, like <coughs> they want to bring something from you. Uh, it's a very it's very strange. Um, for the former refugees. <coughs> people from our communities. When they applied to for their mom, their dad, their brother to come, uh, decline. Mm. This is not the one. This is heaps and heaps and thousands of people apply for a visit. Uh, when do you ask? Ask when you get back. After three hours, they replay the phone. Maybe they don't replay the phone. And you come continues tomorrow to call and they don't replay the phone just for asking the question. So, for my, uh, and now we are like, we are, for me, when they come, anyone with the immigration issue, I try to take him to the lawyer. Mm. And that's mean money. I mean, that this, 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 this client gonna pay money for the lawyer to do for him a simple job with the call phone can be done from the officer of the, of the immigration. If he replaced the phone, or if he replay the email very fast, he can save a heaps of money of their client from getting money or uh, uh, getting paying for the lawyer because the lawyer know how to go. This is his job. He never, never gonna tell me or tell you about how, what he done inside. Um, this is one of the issues. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think to, <clears throat> to give you an example of 
the experience we are talking about immigration, yeah. the information has become really a crucial element of yes. the work yes. of immigration. Because some of our community members, they don't understand how the system works when it comes to immigration. Yeah. An example we can share with our audience here regarding when it comes to immigration. Um, cultural advice has become also an important element for those, for example, for those who want to marry overseas. Mm. Yeah. Okay? It's a big issue. So we have a culture where you have a girlfriend or arranged marriage. You mm -hmm. can't stay together with a girl, at least you need to have married. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what's in New Zealand, the policies is because some people, when they get advice from immigration officers, they say the operation, the operational, uh, the, the immigration Required. officers, the they are the racist or they are the people who really are rejecting they what they're trying yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. But that is a policy. What they're doing, just they're imposing yeah. that policy. Okay, it's a policy. So what need to be done is that <clears throat> being a part mm. of this of the society as well, our culture need to be considered mm. because you can't go and just marriage a girl based on New Zealand way of life, and you need to stay with a girl without marriage. It no. doesn't make sense. Yes. Yes. So those are one of the area where we advising our community members to ensure that for those who want to go and marriage overseas, and actually we have. Girls as well in New Zealand, they want marriage as well. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That's so for those who want to go to overseas, there mm. we need to really to try to to do it right based on our system because it's important what the immigration do as well. It's not because they are rejecting your application or rejecting whatever you want to do. It's just they're doing what is right for our country to ensure that we need to protect. Mm -hmm. In terms of the security, in terms of genuine relationship, because there are people before those who are applying right now mm. who've been manipulating the system. Oh. Okay, so we need to make sure as well the system should work for New Zealanders. Mm -hmm. It's not just for individual cases. The second challenge was when it comes to family reunification. <clears throat> mm. Family reunification, we have a challenge of tier one and tier two. Mm. Yes. Okay. Tier 1, yes, you can apply anytime because you don't have anyone in New Zealand. Mm. But Tier 2, the process of Tier 2, when it comes to application, some of the queue of Tier 2, it will take 5 years or 4 years. Yes, okay. that, the last one in yeah. yeah. 2017. So yeah. the problem is, some of the people, when their application has been accepted by immigration, they've been given a letter in order for them to fill the application. Some of them, they receive the letter, they do what they require. Some of them, they did not receive or they change the address. Mm. Mm. And then guess what? Later on, when the expiry date of the application is done and then they want to go back to immigration to ask about it, the immigration will tell them in the system, we have sent you a letter in this certain yes. and you did not respond and the, the date expired. Yeah. Now the issue is done. Then they come to us to our office, yes, people are crying and all those stuff and then what you need to try to do is just to calm them down take them to the process how things work yes you know because it's not just um like i said before acting in the uh, in a victim mentality okay. always yeah. is about it's blaming a other people. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah so what we try to to share with our audience here is that our system might not perfect but we need to make sure that we are vital mm -hmm. because yeah. it's very important. I mm. think uh, um, as you as you are saying that the quality information is very important and especially when you, it comes to the immigration, yeah. it's very, very important because, you know, uh, if, you, if you, as uh, uh, Faisal said that even if you are applying for a visitor with a yeah. 30 page of application and you need to go through each and every part of it to be understand it more. But, uh, you know, uh, most of uh, the uh, research community comes here, they don't have that quality knowledge. knowledge. Mm. They need some... Um, advocacy uh, from their community member their house member who, who can just not only speak English mm -hmm. but can be able to understand on their point of view what they're trying to do mm -hmm. and when you uh, when people come uh, into the memory resettlement center and even before that when mm -hmm. um, um, mm -hmm. ambassador goes for the interview to the third country and this 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 complaint I've been hearing a lot is that you know when when they go there they promise them okay 
once you go to New Zealand, you yeah. can be able to bring your family. family. Mm -hmm. You're coming to Mangari. Yes, now you are in the uh, Mangari. Uh, when you go to the community, uh, you, uh, you will be able to bring your family. And once they go into the community, nothing after that. There is no help coming from uh, immigration or Mangari resettlement center. Even they go before they won't give you appointment and when they give you an appointment and uh, they will say that okay this is the application fill it out and bring it back bring to it us back. and this is i think uh, it shouldn't shouldn't happen like that when you're and, promising and something someone don't uh, leave their finger after you know um, they are they are coming to the community yeah. and uh, this is not just one case there are hundreds of people yeah. are going through hundreds you know these cases these, these heaps people. of cases and uh, yeah. and when they come to decline your mm -hmm. your process like you're filing, um, doing visa processing or visiting processes. The answer from the officer sometimes uh, like the client who are applying is like humiliating him. Mm. Your one who you're applying for is not travel too much. Mm. Oh, how, how, how. <laughs> that's, that's, that's like I can give you one example. <laughs> how, uh, how that? How? I have one colleague I was working with, and uh, he uh, he has one son born in New Zealand, mm. and then they have like four four siblings and the parents, and then the grandparents have never seen their uh, children for like ten years, and oh. he hasn't gone back. And then he applied for a visa just for the grandparents to come here and they rejected two times just because that uh, they were not sure that if they're gonna come back or it's not. Happened to me. And it's a, a life example. Yeah, yeah. The and place. then he, he went to the uh, minister um, or his local uh, MP, MP mm -hmm. and um, he helped him and write him and then he, he, he makes some calls and they gave him visa in just two days. Yeah. Oh, because he, he he's in the system and he knows how systems work and then he was able to go and you know um, help him but what happened for those people who just can't advocate for themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and they pay money for like uh, be before uh, going to minister they weren't sure that you know he's gonna come what guarantee for them <laughs> that you know if after this is I will give you the, mm. this is a life example mm. I'm the life example mm. I applied for my kids Mm -hmm. uh, come 2014 mm -hmm. and we spent four years in Malaysia, Malaysia yeah. we don't see our their grandma mm -hmm. my mom is died when mm -hmm. I'm Malaysia mm -hmm. and the only their mom grandma is mm -hmm. alive mm -hmm. and they spent until those years all those years uh, we tried three times to apply for my mother-in-law mm -hmm. to come to see them because mm -hmm. she's getting old yeah. Mm -hmm. and she always uh, crying in the phone i need mm -hmm. to see the kids and I, the, the trouble and also in our culture we are, we are very close to each yeah. other grandparents is not yeah. like another yeah, family is, they are part of the family they get mm -hmm. two months mm -hmm. two times my wife get depression mm -hmm. at the end i spent thirty thousand dollar to take them there last this year to see their their mom mm -hmm. their grandma in their saudi grandma. arabia, yeah. in saudi arabia. Yeah. why yeah, I think what, what, what you guys are saying mm -hmm. is that um, always there is a room of improvement mm -hmm. in terms of when it comes to grandparents, mm -hmm. yeah. what, what immigration does is yeah. just, they're going back, how did you come to New Zealand, first mm -hmm. of all, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And they assist your situation. Mm -hmm. What it means, what does your saving account look like? Is it healthy or empty? Because those are technical things many people don't mm -hmm. understand because... When they come here because they are foreigners, uh -huh. when there is a health issue, you need to spend money. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they are not New Zealanders. And also, there are some people who've done it before again. Mm -hmm. They bring their relative here, and then to go back, they don't want to go yeah. back. Uh -huh. So that will become a problem to yes. immigration. Mm -hmm. So without knowing the background, why the immigration yes. acting in that way, we should be able to investigate our own mm -hmm. way as well. Mm -hmm. So to tell you the... Um, the truth regarding to what immigration does is, mm. is actually is about protecting you without what you knowing as well but at the same time because you don't understand and how it works that's mm. why it becomes sometimes it's mm. really really yeah. I, I might slightly be disagreeing with you because mm. you know when you call them immigration and call them oh you approved this this person's visa why you are not uh, approving mine and then they will say 
every case, case is, is different, different. Is different. <laughs> but yeah, when if someone else uh, done this thing why i'm paying for it like someone else family member come here and and seek asylum and why they are putting the same criteria on me it's not me who who have done this crime right so if everyone's case is different why they not put this in my <laughs> yeah. there is another thing as well every officer who deal with the case yeah. is a different choice yeah, that's yeah. Right. different mind yes mm-hmm. different mind because there are officers who have Experience. Well experienced within the system. Mm-hmm. Yes. They're yes. able to assist you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Mm-hmm. Yes. But we can't put them in one category. No. As they put people in one category, mm-hmm. yeah. we should be knowing more yeah. than them. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. what is happening is that within the immigration, there are new people mm-hmm. in the system. Yes. And sometimes they have intern as well. Yes. But you don't know who is who in the system there. But based on someone who's been assigned to your case, mm-hmm. it's Sometimes it's helpful if that person have really experience, mm-hmm. and some of them as well they reach to the point that they go and consult their managers or That's whatever, right. yeah. so mm-hmm. that they can get the right yes. answers. Yes. yes. But what you're saying is true, mm-hmm. as not really as what mm-hmm. I say also mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. one side does not fit all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you experience some things, and what I am saying mm-hmm. is that because of the people that have been dealing with them for many years, mm-hmm. in terms of helping them how to mm-hmm. go. to be able to get answers from uh, the immigration yeah, because yeah. some of them when they come to us they expecting us to give them the answer yeah. they are looking for yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. when you so, talk about how the system work mm. now the you been uh, been labeled as you are from the government yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because Uh, you do not tell them what they're looking for. Yeah. So if you mm. just explain how the system work and it's not meeting the what they want, mm-hmm. yeah. you're not part of them. Yeah, I'm not part of so them. So if yeah. they the get the answer, for example, what you, you are lining up or what they're looking for, now your community yeah. are looking for. <laughs> that. So okay. that, that's a kind of what we all have experienced. Mm. It's so, very... so if you explain about how the system work and it's not aligned up with the issue, or where they will not be convinced mm. yes but it also it will take time in order for them to take them to the process mm. to have better understanding how this way mm. so yeah. that's the thing i think uh, to follow up um uh, with the uh, issues think, that asif yeah. has uh, mentioned before like that's where uh, eicc support, support um community support yeah. services come in like you know as simple as filling out the forms for yes. them applying for the citizenship See, passports yeah. you know all those uh m- you know many questions that they don't know how to fill it out that's mm. it's it seems simple but mm. that's really um helpful for crucial them. That's in a the really, process yeah. um support um mm. uh, for them and then, and then also um and uh, now that ARCC is starting to have a, a relationship with uh, like refugee quota program branch mm-hmm. um, and then also a uh, refugee support um, a family support category mm-hmm. uh, so where um, if we have any questions from the immigration there is a, a particular a few people that we can um, email yeah. and call and ask directly mm. because like you have this, said if we call immigration it, it might take 2 3 hours yeah, and yeah. we have no they reply make, no they make yeah. it this year this month last month we yes. met with them you remember we yes, met with yes, them last yes. month and they start that's mean the whole those years is like a mess <laughs> yeah so now it's it's really an open door uh, and then more support that we would be able to give to the community yes. that you know uh, because we are not in a position to give legal advice but we have those people who can give legal advice where we can one, go and ask do, without uh, interruption this is one of the recommending from us remember remember the the meeting we done with the migration in western spring yeah. one of the they ARCC bring all the communities together and bring the uh, the the immigration officers and they we recommend yeah, we, we call it we call it um uh, community engagement engagement we will we will come back thank you yeah. and stay tuned <laughs> We've been 
discussing about uh, immigration issue and it's a really uh, big issues where, where uh, which community yeah. members face so let us continue discussing about that and so um like you know we, we've talked about like how ercc support uh, the community members facing mm. uh, these challenges uh, are there any more examples yeah the example which i give them I yeah i think before yeah. uh before COVID in 2019 yes. we have opportunity yeah. not before two, 2018 no no we, 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 we start 2007 mm -hmm. until 2019 mm -hmm. through um uh, it's mentioned refugees voices yes. we have um, community engagement with immigration in New Zealand mm -hmm. twice a year mm -hmm. so every six months we meet yeah. so part of that meeting is help a lot of community members who have individual uh, cases where we bring the immigration New Zealand because the role of ARCC is to facilitate that forum mm -hmm. so we invite all the immigration New Zealand different department mm -hmm. there is a filing department there is a, a mangrove yeah, branch yes. there is other uh, different department of immigration so they come and also they update the community about uh, family unification quarter refugees and also asylum seekers as well yeah. so that was a, a really a, a good engagement from immigration and AICC but unfortunately when the COVID-19 come in because everything now is blamed to COVID-19 mm -hmm. <laughs> but actually it's not a COVID-19 so we don't have a community engagement project anymore with immigration mm -hmm. so now they're trying to do everything online but speaking the truth our community they are not designed or online oh, yeah. okay yeah. when it comes so, to yeah, technology yeah, yes. and when it comes to the issue which is people need to discuss about it you can't just feed us to your own system what is need to happen is that people need to reach to the grassroots where they are yeah. it's not because sending us an email for example to say oh we need your community to come to the zoom this is not the this way how, how the community works. The community mm -hmm. works. So what we are suggesting or what we are advising is that our role as a community organization is to facilitate between the service providers and our community. If they want our community to participate, there is a channel where we will be able to communicate with our community so that they can be able to come and meet with those yes. people. So immigration issue is a really very crucial issue. And one of the thing that we really looking forward, for example, now we have um, New Zealand resettlement mm -hmm. refreshment of the the the, 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 the strategy. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Our community are not Where about being part of it. They, mm -hmm. No, they're not a being part participate or yes. part of it because what they have done is just um, from ARCC point of view that might be a political motivated issue. Yeah. Are they are aware or they're not aware of it mm. is there are some of our organization who are really working in the systems who mm. take their boxes they've been part of it and yeah. that's conclude all the community mm -hmm. uh, for those who did not come which is means there is an excuse they did not come but anything is going forward the most important element of anything need to be done for someone for example if i want to do some things about you faisal mm. was your family and I'm doing on your behalf without coming and consult with you and talk to you. How do you think that will be a legitimate document that you present me? Zero. You see? It is the same example. Like if, Zero. If, um, Faisal is a family man and he's the head of the family. Mm. And they're going to his young toddler, two years guy, and <laughs> <Yeah>. seeking, <laughs> seeking him, asking him how can we improve your yeah. family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come to Minna. Yeah, Minna. <laughs> come to Minna, my daughter. Yeah. Yeah. How will you do the service? <laughs> At least come to Fatima. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, they, were, they will do something here. That's, that's, the, that's the... Yeah, because we, we've been through it. We got an email of engagement. And the way how new engagement is not the way how we used to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. So to have the quality information or to have the quality of consultation of the community, Mm -hmm. Because for us, being a voice of the community, always we prepare, not us to respond to whatever they want. We need to bring the community to respond to exactly. what they want. Okay? So this is the practice. But you can't expect me by sending me email so I can attend to your meeting that feed your agenda, not feeding the community mm -hmm. agenda. Mm -hmm. And you're driven by your own agenda, you're not driven by the community agenda. That's not a consultation. This is what happened in okay? 2000 when we make the, the, that meeting. The outcome of it, now we see it. They are coming, 
to you and that you know, and they say okay can you give us they create a department i think so like uh, inside the immigration no they, they did they, not they there is a change was in the immigration yeah this is the change okay there is a change was in immigration but honestly speaking hmm. in the 2019 when we went to Wellington, you're mm -hmm. part of it. Yes, we right. went to the Community Engagement Forum in Wellington mm -hmm. in May 2019. Mm -hmm. So from that, there was our outcome mm -hmm. of that meeting. It's mm -hmm. just to come back and consult the community because what we have done as an organization, yeah. we send 10 delegates, mm -hmm. youth, board, staff, community leaders, we send them to Wellington to be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. As a result of their voice, we told them that we're not just a community. You need to go and have a conversation with the community. And at the time, immigration listened, and the immigration went back and they draft a questionnaire where we conduct different meetings, where the meeting you were talking yeah, about yeah. before. So we consulted our community about the issue. Uh, immigration need to gather from the community. Mm -hmm. We gather them, and also we report back to immigration. You remember the mm -hmm. document we have, uh, hear from us, uh, not about us. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. From us, so we have that report, we give it to the immigration. But and up to date, the immigration never respond back to it. Mm -hmm. And what we are seeing now, some of the organization adopting the same question that has been done long time ago. Now they are coming asking the same question. Tell us how do you belong mm -hmm. to New Zealand? And already we produce a document and we, ne we, ne we never have a feedback, feedback about from it. the immigration about mm -hmm. what the community I was saying. Yeah. You know? Yeah, this has been uh, a long time issue, not only for um, uh, forced migrant migrant community, but also for New Zealanders as well, is that uh, uh, the, the communication they do is a one-way channel. Mm -hmm. You're asking questions you think and one -way giving, traffic? yeah, one-way traffic <laughs> and uh, giving them reports, even giving them solutions yeah. on, on, on a research, yes. but there will be no, <laughs> no coming traffic and yeah. will be coming in. <laughs> and yes. also, uh, we've been talking about a lot about, you know, the, these issues. So, Aman, what do you think the possible solution um, um, that uh, New Zealand uh, immigration should adopt about uh, consulting the communities? I think, as you, you always know, our mm -hmm. approach as an organization, mm -hmm. finding a solution, mm -hmm. that's our approach. Yeah. Okay? So for ARCC, we have our three uh, principles, mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. our working principle, finding solution, mm -hmm. commitment, and social so justice. Mm -hmm. okay? When we come to the table, those are the things is driving us, mm -hmm. how we negotiate about it. Mm -hmm. So if I want to recall, a part of the solution is that for immigration New Zealand to adopt the way how we already engaged with them a long time ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? You can't talk about the community while you are sitting in your office mm -hmm. and in your computer. Mm -hmm. Okay? Our community is not communicating online. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Our community they are good in word of mouth, mm -hmm. they are good face to face conversations. Yes. Okay? So if we need to have that kind of dialogue, a proper a dialogue that can provide a solution to our community, mm -hmm. that's a dialogue need to take place. Yes. Okay, and also it's not really something because my understandings of working in the sector for those many years, there are people who are really genuinely within the government department who want to make a difference within the community. Mm. But you need to understand always when the change come, mm. new people come, they come with a new different mm. I, I, a mindset or new different ideas. Mm. They might be the same department, but the different people who have come as a new, mm. they have their own agenda. Well. They have their you own see? thinking. Yes. Yeah, so the solution to respond to your question is mm -hmm. that people should engage in a meaningful way mm -hmm. where we can um, uh, establish the relationship. Okay, uh -huh. and the trust that allow us yeah. to work mm -hmm. and provide two-way communication mm -hmm. that enable yes. our community to improve way of the information mm -hmm. which is they are lacking at the moment. Mm -hmm. Because they need to understand as well how uh, those departments of government work and especially yeah. with the immigration. Mm -hmm. But there is a possibility of improvement. Mm -hmm. it, again, it's not a pointing fingers on one another, mm -hmm. but actually if our community, they need to have a dialogue that will enable them to understand how the system works. Mm -hmm. There should be a immigration as a government department to initiate that to allocate the resources because you can't engage with people. For example, what we have and we say all the time, which is I've been the target of saying that mm -hmm. 
you pay yourself and use the community voluntarily. Yeah. That is yeah. not fear. This is the problem. Yeah. Okay? That is yeah. not fear. Yeah, not fear. One of the things is that you allow the community, for example, our experience, any government department, they want us to meet with them in the working hours. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Even within the working hours, they're not really trying to understand the circumstances of the community leaders, what they're mm -hmm. facing. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, they have families. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they have other work commitments. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they, you need them to meet your own criteria. Mm -hmm. One of the example of government department, they send an email to me to say, oh, we need 10 to 15 community leaders. We need to consult them about this, this, this. I say, okay, that's fine. No worries. This is what ARCC does. We will facilitate that. Mm -hmm. What resources do you have to be mm -hmm. given to them? Yeah. Yeah. And they say, what resources do you mean? <laughs> and I said, okay, are you sent by your department without paid? Mm -hmm. Or you get paid to do work you do? No, I get paid to work I do, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need a community to come there free of their time, of their knowledge, knowledge. and so that to do your job. Oh, I did not thought about it. Mm -hmm. I said, exactly, <laughs> you did not thought about it. That's why I'm reminding you. Mm -hmm. So if you require those community leaders to be part of your consultation, first of all, you need to meet their time. Yeah. which is on weekend. Yeah. Secondly, you need to provide something to Koha to say thank you yeah. for your time. Also, you need to provide a refreshment. Even mm. thank you for your information okay? you give so to me. If the government mm. department they are doing kind of this, what do you think the community in the grassroots, where they're going to get the resources of the involvement or participation mm. was in kind of important discussion? Yes. No, because part of the, the barriers which is I call it the structure barriers within the system, mm. is that lack of the resources. Mm. And then they, they come and say, oh, community, they don't want to involve. No, that's not the involved. Okay, involved. if you want the community to involve, come and consult the community and listen. Because there is a listen of, of doing something and act on it, and mm. there is a listen, listen from this year yeah. to other people. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 So, yeah. genuinely, the solution is there, mm -hmm. yeah. but need people who are dedicated with all mm -hmm. in those departments who are really value your community time, value your community knowledge, mm -hmm. then everything is going to be fine. ARCC used to have, a, a, as you said, that a, a good uh, channel with the immigration and uh, the last time uh, we met uh, was in 2019. What do you think, uh, uh, what broke that uh, communication? I think again, I need to mm -hmm. go to say, mm -hmm. <laughs> COVID has become a problem. <laughs> because everything now is going to COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything now is going to COVID. But there is some time where the people are saying mm -hmm. when there is uh, something um, it has been hide with the, you know, the, 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 the eyes. Mm -hmm. And when the eyes smile down and mm -hmm. everything will be mm -hmm. discovered. Mm -hmm. So now the COVID is going. <laughs> <laughs> So everything now will be discovered. No, 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 no. So we will we will see how the relationship um, is going to be uh, going forward. We have mm -hmm. a positive relationship with immigration, mm -hmm. but definitely there are people who has been changed mm -hmm. with an immigration and people who've been working with ARCs for long, which yeah. is the dear to our heart. And we hope we have mm -hmm. the same people who can come along. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the, mm -hmm. the, the 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 thing we are hoping to happen. But um, mm -hmm. there is a more conversation need to yeah. take place. And also uh, the ARCC, even if uh, immigration is not coming to us, we're going to keep knocking their door <laughs> until they're going to open the door on both sides. There is something we have at the ARCC, we're not going to give up because no. we don't have anything to lose anyway. Yeah. 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 And we're back yeah. to the wall. Yeah, so we're going to be knocking their door. And doors. ARCC is like a cornered lion. If you cornered something and it becomes that very dangerous lion. Yeah. Yeah. Because it has nothing to lose. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes as well, uh, people might see as a critical organization, mm -hmm. especially for individuals within the organization. And we are driven by the lived experience. We are taking as opportunity mm -hmm. of providing the element of positivity when we tell our truth. Mm -hmm. Because the, the most cases our stories never been captured, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Whether in the media or whether in the government department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are people who've been marginalized, mm -hmm. who've been victimized, mm -hmm. so other people can talk on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because it has been a long, long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when they see someone who are really upfront 
and is speaking about the issue facing their community, mm -hmm. again, you will get a label and you will get a new name, mm -hmm. you will be called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's not something to scare us. Mm -hmm. But what is important is that what we are trying to communicate is that, I think we mentioned it uh, in the previous episode we have, mm -hmm. in terms of retaining the right of those people who has been taken through the journey before they come to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So our obligation as our organization is that let's use the importance of the element of the culture, which is the country we live in. Mm -hmm. Okay, If we need to support people, we need to respect them who they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to care about them based on the need they want from yeah. us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just applying the element of kindness, because we are humanitarian organization yes. drive by human right approach mm -hmm. and also human values. Yes. So if we don't meet that, that will not our organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we need to keep it speak our truth. Mm -hmm. We need to speak confronting mm -hmm. those issues because mm -hmm. if we don't confront those issues, it's gonna buy us back. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay. So to free back. ourselves from the mental health, to free ourselves from any other aiding agenda mm -hmm. within ourselves, we need to speak up. Otherwise we live in denial. And that's mm -hmm. where the mental health kick in mm -hmm. when things are not yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. let us try uh, our best and mm -hmm. see how we're going to go. Mm -hmm. um, to try to reach to the, the conclusion of mm -hmm. our today's discussion, I think it will be worth it to, to ask question about um, how do you feel about the immigration discussion because mm -hmm. we thought we need to talk about immigration and employment. Mm, yeah. Immigration <laughs> issue is a, is a broader, topic, big broader topic. Little, little, little yeah, immigration. broader topic. So our aim is not just to blame immigration, mm. but our aim actually is just to bring uh, the conversation yeah. and uh, trying to how we can help one another to mm -hmm. improve the services, mm -hmm. whether from ARCC and also from the immigration. Mm -hmm. But definitely. Mm -hmm two organizations need to come and work together mm -hmm. yes. for the better of our community. Mm -hmm. exactly. So what do you think, team, regarding to this topic? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? I'm feeling that we are knocking the lock room for a long time. Mm -hmm. We need to open the lock room of the immigration and go inside, see what's happening. And I think the right of anyone in New Zealand understand the rule and regulations of this organization, yeah, yeah. this department of government. Mm. Uh, the only thing we know about it, changing ministries. Every time now the ministry, uh, yeah. well, last time, this time is Michael Wood, yeah. the time is the uh, thing for Fofalo. Yeah, nothing else. <laughs> so please, please guys, come on. Yeah, come on right. <laughs> I, I think uh, this topic has been a due for a long time and uh, something that we wanted to talk for a long time and I'm feeling good that it's off of our chest now mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, especially uh, when because uh, we talk about empathy and uh, everywhere we go we talk about empathy but the question is that are we implying empathy in our daily lives? Yeah. You need to ask this question if you are sitting at home watching TV and you need to ask this question to someone who's sitting in an office, you know, and uh, um, doing for the community. Yes. Mm. And uh, when when you uh, go to the grassroots and when you come down from your, uh, your higher um, uh, seat and come down to the community level and feel how difficult is for someone who has no family in New Zealand mm -hmm. how difficult for someone who has been married newly and need because of these rules need to be separated from their wife which is a violation of uh, human rights mm -hmm. if someone um, the grandchildren has been yeah. born yeah. and they've been declined for visa just because we are scared that they will not go Gone back, back. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of question that uh, we, need to, we need to we need to ask and yeah. uh, sorry and and we need to um, imply em empathy more yeah. and more yes. often. Yes. I yes. I always try to do that yeah. and I think everyone should you know should mm, have the right mm, to do that. Yeah, yes. I think that drive of ASC. So what do you think, Juan? Yeah, um, it's a very insightful um, discussion mm -hmm. we had today um, on immigration topic yeah, yeah. and uh, from um, what we have discussed you know mm -hmm. I think it's the immigration uh, needs to reach out more to the uh, 
community mm -hmm. the uh, because we have talked about uh, identify the challenges mm -hmm. and the common mm -hmm. issues that the community face so yeah. or if they could reach out and support um, um, Taylor mm -hmm. the support for the community mm -hmm. and also you know uh, like you have said allocate the resources mm -hmm. if um, they can't do it they are organization like ARCC yeah. Yeah. Uh, and other organization who are uh, helping directly you know working together um, supporting the community, the community. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. or if they have the resources allocated like I've said, you know, very simple tasks, mm -hmm. uh, filling out the application or making them understanding, raising the awareness, uh, advocating them, it's, mm. it will it's go on a positive exactly. journey, I, I believe. And I think uh, this is the migration brings sadness for a lot of community mm. members. So we hope in the future, mm. if we see this kind of uh, migration organization bring happiness, Hmm. to those community members mm -hmm. by the, the declining you don't feel when they decline your phone oh because I feel this one through my wife through my kids when I come to home and I say oh sorry I found uh, receive an email decline your grand mom to come to me to hmm. see you the, the, the house will be silent for the whole two days three days and sadness why the lady or those ladies come in or those elders come in to have better life. They have a lot of ways. If you need them to go back, they're, they're not going to stay here. Mm -hmm. You're not going to it. Okay, just to, to finish our show today, um, our next topic is going to be uh, employment yeah. because uh, today um, the time has been occupied yeah. by immigration issue. Um, just to uh, reflect also to to what um, each and every one of you has said. Mm -hmm. um, I think our today discussion is just to bring attention to whoever have yes, um, yes, yes. Uh, input yeah. or relationship with yeah. an immigration issue. Um, we're not here to point the fingers. No. Always before we point the fingers to you, mm -hmm. other four coming to us. So yeah. <laughs> for ARCC, we always know that um, whatever we are saying here, we have responsibility to with it as well. Hmm. Where we will have our role to play, we have responsibility to um, to help our community. Um, what is important is that um, I've been highlighting this to many uh, government agencies is that the work we do is a government work. Mm -hmm. yeah. You like it or not, that's the reality. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a government. But work. it doesn't mean that because we are new arrival migrant to the country. Mm -hmm. We not deserve to be given the services we are looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what need to happen is that you want to reach the community. You need the resources that allow the community to engage. Yeah. Okay. For our organization, we are an organization for a purpose. Yeah. So we need to work in a partnership with the government so that we will be able to reach the community Definitely. where we will be able to conduct. Yeah ethically mm -hmm. right oh, yeah. our reach to engage with the community yeah that's so right. we are here with open harm to reach um, any government department who would yeah. like to reach our community if they have um, let touch uh, politics here if they have political will to improve our community life um, we are our organization where you can reach and we will be able to facilitate that to, to reach to that grassroots so um, thank you for listening where you are, was in New Zealand, outside New Zealand. Um, we are here at uh, ARCC Reset TV. We're always trying to just to come and share with you the experience we had with our community members. Yeah. And the most importantly is that if you're outside there, you want to give a hand, or you want to support the work of ARCC, please join us. And be part of the team. As always, we ask in every episode, if we have young people outside there who want to be in the media, or want to be in a, the space of what we are occupying here, so please do reach ARCC. And I hope um, today talk or will um, uh, get you will get something to learn from it. And and thank you everybody for um, thank you, well, your thank time. You, thank, and, you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Keep the good well. work, and we look forward to see you for next month yeah. uh, on employment.
topic. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and TikTok.